the way that it's built is through 3D printing, and so not having any experience in building at all, um, I like the 3D printing aspect of it, and so I figured, hey, why not? Let's get a 3D printer. If I don't get a droid, then maybe I'll make jewelry or something like that, and then it ended up going quite differently, and I absolutely love droid building, and that's what started it from there. So just for the love of Star Wars, and then being able to actually make your own droid. Uh, for me, it was, I met someone online and he said, uh, can I bring my R2-D2 by? And I was like, what do you mean your R2-D2? He's like, I built one. I was like, okay, sure. Um, and as soon as I saw the R2-D2, I was like, I must have my own. <laughs> and I thought I would be responsible and wait until I had like a proper house to build in with a garage. And then I went to Celebration Anaheim, the same one as Ashley, I saw the Droid Builders Room, which had like 120 fan-built droids, and I was like, no, I'm literally starting today. Went home and ordered my first part. Um, and so I quote unquote finished my droid in 2017, but as all of these builders will tell you, you are never truly done. You just continue to tinker forever and ever, and I'm still making upgrades and changes to the droid. And once you, once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> um, so for our next question, what so far has been the hardest part of droid building for you? Um, the hardest part, we 3D print a lot of pieces and they leave lines in it, so you have to finish it and uh, learning how to paint it and kind of do it on your own. That's been the, the a learning curve, but um, as with building any of them, I mean, you learn as you go, which is really rewarding. probably patience because it's a lot of trial and error and if you screw something up it, at first you're like oh man I screwed it up and how am I going to fix this and then so it's just like you have to take a step back and research a little bit more and figure out how you're going to fix it and then it takes a lot of patience especially when you put a lot of time in it and you have this like in your head like how you're going to do it and it doesn't work it's frustrating <laughs> so just the patience to figure it out absolutely and then also when you are in that frustration state, you know, knowing that you can work through it. Um, not any of us know everything in here, so we all of us have had help on our droids, um, and that's the beauty of this uh, Theatric Builders Club and BBA Builders Club, Master Builders. I mean, there's just so many builders club. There's probably a Ford Builders Club, Baby Yoda out there, <laughs> but all of us help each other, and that's the beauty of this community is that not everyone's an electrical engineer, mechanical engineer. You know, so you can't not know it all, but you know, there's things that you might be really strong in. And so it's still just having the curiosity, never losing that wonder of like being able to put something together um, and just, you know, keeping that hope of like, yes, I can have a droid, you know, like you just need to, you know, be able to ask questions. You might not know the right question right away, but it'll sometimes, you know, come to you at a later point. But yet, never giving up, having patience, and just knowing that eventually your journey will get there. It might take a couple of years, it might take a year, it just depends on you know, what type of help that you have and how much time, money, whatever that you have with you, but um, it's definitely a journey. Yeah, I definitely will echo what all of them said is, you know, even though I am an engineer by trade, I still have no idea anything about the electrical system. Um, luckily, I work with several thousand of the best engineers on this planet, and so I can just call on one of them to come and do the electrical work on my droid. But um, I still had to learn how to do all the like mechanical aspect. Like I took a tool shop in like high school, but um, still like learning how to use a Dremel and how to like properly do spray painting and all that kind of stuff was all new for me. Um, and so it was a lot of trial and error and being okay with making mistakes and learning from that and then continuing on. Um, so I think that's like the first couple questions I had off the top of my head. So we'll take some audience questions now. Uh, just raise your hand and yell them out. Back there. Yeah, is anybody um, working with the, any of the side main at all? Are you also in? Yeah, so she was asking, are, um, have we used like styrene or anything? Or um, what we used yeah, but the black one, he's, he's a flat flex styrene frame. So it comes in flat packs and they're kind of laser cut. And you just kind of pop it out, glue it together, make it you know, a frame. So yeah, it's, it, styrene's pretty easy to work with. You just glue it together. And then build up It's strong. Yeah, um, yeah, you can reinforce it with you know more glue and everything. Yeah, but it's pretty sturdy. I mean, we take it out, we're taking it out a lot. Another one we're doing wood with the next one, just change up the materials and just do it however you want to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of different like types of material that folks can use. So like mine is almost entirely aluminum with some like composite and 3D parts as well. What are you making yours out of? 
the purple one down there is all wood. It's painted, so it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> uh, and then it's wrapped in aluminum. I don't have an RGB yet, but I'm building one. Um, so the route that I first started, um, it'd be a wooden frame. So this is where it comes to what is your budget. So if you have a lot of money, you can go full aluminum, which is getting close to around maybe $20,000. You know, so it just depends on who you buy it from. Maybe if you have a machine builder themselves that can do it. Um, if you go down through the wood styrene route, you know, you can break it down, you know, to maybe, we've seen some people do it for a thousand. Um, that's very ambitious. And I mean, you are working a lot of the parts yourself, you know, at that point, I mean, you are literally, you're making everything. You're not gonna be relying on somebody else, you know, doing the part for you. Um, but most people, you know, we have a mixture of, you know, there's people that provide parts uh, for R2. So whether it's uh, resin casting, 3D printed styrene or styrene parts, um, and like for the skins, you would cut them yourself. Um, so there's a little bit of a, uh, like some know-how on making sure that you're cutting straight lines, you know, you probably end up cutting yourself a few times and stuff. And so, you know, watching other R2 builders, you know, go through their journey, you know, it's really just based on budget and what you want it to do. You can have the, all the bells and whistles where every single compartment opens, like Ed Perello. Uh, this gentleman right here, he has an amazing R2 with every single gadget. There's one poster that literally lists every single gadget and he's marking off which one he's had and which one he still needs. And it's amazing, absolutely amazing. He's the only person, uh, I think, in the club that <laughs> that has. Yeah, this many. club's like, I, yeah, there's like 47 a week of these arms. I got one of these guys. I ran out of the room, so I started adding <laughs> That's how many he has. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely amazing. So, <laughs> but yeah, so you're know, going from that, it's, it's just whatever you wanted to do, or you could build it like a tank. Um, because we know at conventions, you know, people get a touchy, grabby feeling and might like, pull stuff off and pull a panel that actually opens up, rip it off. Maybe you don't want that to open anymore. So it's just a tank, it's going to beep and boop and go through. You know, well, that's going to come back on your cost. So it just depends how fancy you want to get with it. <laughs> and even if you have a tank like mine, you can still walk through the door at the convention this morning. His head can go flying off and put a nice giant tent in his tent, uh, nice dome there this morning. Um, yeah, so you also have to, you know, a lot of people like build theirs and like hoard them at home of like, I don't want anyone to like, you know, I don't want to accidentally like touch or break apart or anything. I'm like, you know, I saw the dent and I was like, cool, weathering. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, you know, I'll probably get the like big aluminum dent out, but that nice thing there it kind of looks like some good carbon scoring, so you know, that might just stay, so, you know, um, and, and you know, I've run his feet and I don't even know how many things anymore and paint chipped off and you know so you also just kind of accept it's something that you're going to have to do like maintenance and everything on like I've done several upgrades over the course of the years um, repainted some parts had to um, take out his little arms in the front because once I put the spray paint on they were too thick to move out so I had to take them out and re-sand them all the way down and repaint them kind of all of those little tweaky things that you end up having to do over again any other audience questions? Way in the back. So I heard that there's a cost. I heard you say you paid a thousand for twenty thousand. Like, what is the average cost of building it? Yeah, that's going to entirely depend on what materials you use. So mine is almost entirely aluminum. I went the like super high end route, um, and my spreadsheet says that I spent about sixteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Um, I literally tracked every single part. Um, now that includes. Um, I did include listing all the special tools that I needed that I bought for him. Um, that's about 2000 of that cost. Um, and then about 1000 or so was just shipping of getting these parts from other builders. Um, I, I literally, I marked every single down who I bought it from, what day, like all of that marked out. So that's how I know that number off the top of my head. I don't know if y'all feel comfortable sharing how much you spent on yours. <laughs> Um, that one, it's the styrene, so that was like a couple hundred dollars for the, the frame pack. But the dome is entirely 3D printed, so our printer's really small, and it was like $200 my husband put it together, and it's been running for three years. You just have to slice up the parts, glue them together, and we've been printing like crazy. So I, I don't know, that droid's probably like I, under a thousand, I would say, to make, to make that one. <laughs> for BB-8, um, I went through three different printers. Uh, first started with the Flash Creative Pro. 
Um, that was about an $800 printer and my first BBA. I've, I've had, I've done like three different ones um, until I got to the one that I have now. Um, and it was a puzzle piece. So each piece, like on the, on the white part of the BBA, it's a white panel. In the beginning, that was three pieces. Now it's two. So I mean, it just took a long time to print. And filament cost, it can range between $15 all the way to 30 just depends on the material, like if it's PLA or ABS. ABS is more like a Lego material. PLA is uh, a little bit more softer. It'll melt as a higher, not higher, as a lower melting point. Uh, so you don't want to leave it outside, whereas ABS can leave it outside a little bit longer. Um, but the printer that I have is a Race 3D. Um, I can print full piece, you know, full one piece of parts. I can do the dome all in one shot. Um, that printer is around three thousand um, dollars. But the reason why that I liked it is that it's a workhorse, so I can do like production quality stuff, and it'll just keep moving. Not to say there's anything wrong with flashboard. I just needed a bigger um, bed frame, uh, uh, sorry, uh, print bed for it. Uh, Creality um, also has a really great three D printer, and they're very well priced. They range between three to like five hundred dollars. I think to like seven fifty, and they get really, really big. Um, a lot of people have been having great uh, prints with them, and so it just depends which way that you want to go. Um, you know, it's like with anything. You know, there's like boutique, you know, tools all the way up to you know this very average, you know, average price. You know, so I mean, you can be cost effective with this. Um, the, the so the most uh, expensive part I would see on BBA is the drive system. Uh, printing the frame and getting the static BBA, that's only gonna cost you maybe a few hundred dollars, you know, if you're if you're including the part of the 3D printer. Uh, but the drive system alone is about $3,000 to make. Um, there's metal parts in it. Um, it's the different hardware uh, that goes in with it and it's just specking different parts that is much different than from R2. So R2, um, I would say the drive system is a lot cheaper. Um, but it's also RC based. Uh, mine is uh, Arduino and Bluetooth based. We do. There is an RC based uh, BB-8 that will be coming out. Um, there's a drive system in the work um, by a gentleman named Dave Fioria. Um, and so that'll at least bring some of the cost down a little bit, but there's more metal parts to it now. So um, we're just, the club is, you know, revising different things. And that's the, the beauty of this club is there's people constantly revising and coming up with new innovations on how to make these droids drive a lot better and you have a lot longer lifetime with it. Because when you make an investment with this, you want it to be around 10 years. You're not hoping it's just like two years and that's it and then it's constantly breaking. You want it to be around. So it is an investment. And also, you're not spending all the money like all up front either. You know? Yeah, that's the good part. You, yeah. can, you can buy a piece this month, buy a piece next month, you know, here and there. And yeah. after a while, I mean, that's another reason. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, you end up with all kinds of different tools. So you end up with yeah. more, you get <laughs> more than just a droid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get yeah. all kinds of tools. Yeah. And, and you learn how to use them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, there are definitely things that I've learned working on R2 that have like applied into other things. Mm -hmm. um, and even with building R2, like I was offered a more like actual hands-on engineering job. So like, oh, well, we saw you build R2, so you know what you're doing. I'm like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but um, I know there was someone who was at Kennedy Space Center who um, was applying for a job there, and he brought in his R2D2 dome to show off like all the things that he had like soldered and welded and everything in it, and he got the job based off of that. Wow. So like. These can be very useful um, for you know, learning actual real yeah, life skills. Resume so. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. On the, the controller, the person who's operating it. Um, they could be as animated as they want. They could just let it sit there and just go, no, not looking at you. You know, not sure drop any sounds. So it's all based on puppeteering. Um, what you see in the movies is, you know, highly puppeteered. And so you can have the most boring driver out there and not interact with the crowd. You know, you've got someone that really knows their droid and like, you know, knows how to move them around, pivot around people, you know, make it animated, make it happy, sad, whatever. Um, there's each droid builder loads their own different sounds into it to bring out that personality of the droid. Um, so there's really, I mean, there's like a standard set of, you know, sounds that you know that are R2, like the scream. 
Mm -hmm. You hear the scream, you're like, that's R2. But it could also play a cantina dance, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, there's just different things that bring it out, and that's all up to the person. So if you want it to cuss, sure, have a cuss, but you're not going to get very far to convince you because everybody's going to throw you out, you know? So you want it to do nice things. You know, you want to be, like, playful and enjoy it. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm still working on mine, but like I want his like dome panels and everything to open up and give him like more of that kind of personality and interaction. Um, it's still all remote control, but I'll be able to like see what he's doing, who he's interacting with, and be able to like push certain buttons. Um, what I really want him to do is coordinate doing the screen and then like all the panels open up and the arms, he goes, ah, he like spins around with all the, the things. Um, that, that's one of the things I've seen some other art to builder do. It's like, oh, I want to do that. So I'm working towards that goal. Um, and then um, there are some other fun things like, you know, as you were saying, like they'll make them do the cantina band song or other things. And um, I know like I've got happy birthday loaded on him. He'll sing you happy birthday. Um, uh, one of the things I'm actually working on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go, start towards him. Um, so one of the things I'm also working on my droid right now and I'm hoping to have done for next month, there's a Doctor Who convention um, that I'll be at Gallifrey One. And so I want R2 to cosplay as a Dalek. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, I, but I like purposely want it bad. Like I'm literally like spray painting cardboard and foam balls to like put it together. I bought a plunger and a whisk and I'm gonna tie to him. Um, and I was really trying to like play around with R2 sounds to make it sound like exterminate and or you know the other Dalek noises. And like anytime I like was trying to play with the noise it just like didn't sound like R2 anymore. So what I've decided I'm gonna do is, um, luckily the BBC provides audio files with like all the common like Dalek phrases, so I downloaded Exterminate, and then I put like R2's little giggle sound attached to the end. So I was like, that'll work, that'll, that gets the point across. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. Um, you anything as creative as you want, like what you want your gadgets you want to put in there? My husband's evil, so he put a shocker in one of his. So it's like, <laughs> and he put an air horn in another one, so it makes a really loud noise. I mean, he think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to put, make my panels on my mouse to move, but um, I'm not smart enough. I didn't figure it out. But uh, yeah, it's all, it's all um, you know, creativity. Yeah. One of the interesting things about like the R2 builders or other droid builders club that's maybe different if y'all have ever heard of, like the Rebel Legion or Five of First Legion, where you have to apply, you have to be like as screen accurate as possible, all that kind of stuff. Droid builders, we don't care. We, there's no application, there's no approvals. You literally join the forum and go, like, and we'll help you out. Um, you know, of course, a lot of people like myself, we go for the traditional, like, R2, BB-8, everything, but like, really, you can just kind of make your own if you want. Because um, it's your droid, I mean, you customize it the way that you, you want to make it, and then only you're going to be satisfied when you're done or at some point. Rainbow ones, I mean, whatever, yeah. whatever you want, that's fine. Sky's the limit. Yep. That's really what it is. Yep. Uh, question over? Yeah, I have two questions. Okay. I want to know, um, how do you, what do you guys use to transport them, and what is the biggest challenge bringing them in public? Mm -hmm. That depends on the weight and what comes apart and how big your vehicle is. I mean, ours plays on a skid and slide it in the back of my Jeep. So that's how we do ours, and I know Carrie's got a really heavy one, so I don't know. Yeah, so um, my weighs 148 pounds, um, so I cannot lift that by myself. I can tell you that the dome is 13 pounds and the battery are 13 pounds, but that still leaves you with over 100 pounds to try and transport. So at the moment, I have to have someone else help me get it in and out of my car. Um, you could say that my cost of my droid was about double because I took R2 car shopping to find a better car for him to fit into. Uh, and let me tell you that the dealerships really love it when you bring the R2C to this. Um, so I ended up uh, getting a RAV4, and he can either stand up or lay on his back, depending on how much other stuff I want to cram in there with him, um, with the head off. He does not fit in there with the head on, but um, standing up or laying back. I usually have him lay back. It's a bit more secure, um, unless I'm really trying to cram stuff in there. Um, so yeah, I usually have to have two people help me get it in and out. Um, I'm hoping at some point to build some sort of transport system so I can get him in and out of the car myself. Um, and so once I do that, I think I'll take him to more events. But right now, I basically have to like convince my boyfriend, like, please. And then when you do get him out of the car, you have to find the wheelchair ramps and the elevators to get him to where he needs to go, which can be challenging at times. Unless you have my mouse and you just 
For BB-8, I have a big Pelican case, you probably saw it maybe coming in, um, and so that's the best way for me to get BB-8 around in one piece. Um, I can also go on the plane with them, so if you fly Southwest, it's like five dollars each way, um, and so I can actually go around, so which is great, you know. So BB-8 is actually a good one to kind of tour with. Um, R2 would be you would have to crate that one up and actually ship it on its own. So you wouldn't be able to do it on the plane unless you actually did uh, freight service on that. Or drive. Or drive. Yeah, yeah you can drive. I think it's pretty badass that you all are women up there. Do you think it's pretty like half and half in the Droids Guild or? No. no. <laughs> like this is pretty much it in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're supposed to have one more. She's unfortunately sick today. Yeah. Um, okay. And she had a chopper. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's definitely more of a boys club. But but yeah. okay, anyone can do it. It's not a bad thing. It's yeah. not a bad thing. Um, and I think a lot of it is, you know, um, you probably don't, a lot of girls, you know, they want to, but they want to be a layup. They don't necessarily want to be our two's handler. You know, but now we really see a lot of that changing. And so um, there is a group called uh, Startups Builders Initiative, which is a um, all-female um, droid builders group. But we are also a part of the larger group. So this is not to say that we're excluding you know anybody from it. Um, it's just a forum for it if you um, want to come in and you don't want to be a part of like. Like you're afraid to really ask a question. I think the things that we, you know, that we've seen is that like you don't want to ask a dumb question. Then you have a really smart person, and you know you don't want to like feel like you're um, putting yourself out there and like oh, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just an easy way, you know, to kind of ease yourself in and stuff. And so plus, you know, we want to know where all the girls are at. You know, so there's yeah. probably about 300 in the world um, <laughs> that are great builders. And so by having this group, I'm saying, like, hey, we're here. Yeah. But, yes. you know, we're not saying that don't interact with the other people in the groups. It's like, no, that's not it at all. It's just we're in a little fan club of ourselves and we cheer each other on. <laughs> and then we can talk about baking cookies and our kids. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, so there's stuff that guys don't want to hear about us doing. You know, so that's, that's what that's for. R2 shaped cookies. R2 shaped cookies. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I bake an R2. So there's a Los Angeles area builder meetup every year. So I usually bake like R2 cakes and I'll make them in different color patterns, slice them, all that thing. So the guys are gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it pretty. Yeah. Another question. Yeah. Your uh, BB-8. Uh, what's the construction? The outside is all 3D printed, you said, right? Correct. Right. Are you using an acrylic sphere inside there? No, nope, there's no sphere. There's no inner sphere. So um, it's 3D printed inside. There is a bar. So it's a single axle drive system. Um, so, the, so there's a there are two hubs on the inside, and then there's a bar that goes across, and then there's a another uh, pipe that goes up, right? And so on the top of that pipe, there is a um, um, little thing on the top that has the holes in the magnet, so it's a the dome magnet now, and so yeah. that's what allows the dome to connect from the top. So it just barely hovers. So I have wheels underneath um, the dome that sit on top of the sphere. So it has the illusion that it's just hovering over it, but there's actually wheels underneath it. Um, and then the magnet just holds it together. And then I also have a, um, there's a flywheel, and then there's also um, uh, a weight on the bottom. Um, so I have about like eight pounds that keeps it level. And so between that and the gyro, it's just moving forward. So the way that the panels are oriented, it's just like that moving magic. You think that it's rolling 365 degrees, but it's just, it's only able to go kind of like forward and back and kind of tilt. But it, it's, a, it's the illusion that it, the whole thing can just go 365. I can spin it and go one way, spin it, and then go another route. I but see. but it's, the, there's hubs, it's just it's static in the inside. Okay. So the but the construction of the outside shell that's all three D material. Yep. That's it. Correct. Wow. Okay. And it's um so the white parts, the white panels, those are joined together. There's metal bars, so mm -hmm. it adds a little bit more strength to it. And then the orange circle panels, they're screwed from the inside. <clears throat> and then I have one magnetic panel that I just twist, so I'm able to just go in and put my battery in the inside. And then I also have a um, a kill switch, so I have a Fimco relay switch, so um, I can turn my drive system on. And then if it decides to take off, I can just click it without having to run after it. It <laughs> decides to like go somewhere. So that's the safety mechanism on that. It's like having a restraining bolt on. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and, th and what material did you use to print? ABS. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Um, how many hours approximately uh, did it take to make your own droid? 
took me two years and a month. Uh, how many hours that is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, um, so as I said, I went home and ordered my first part from the, the convention, and it was the dome, but it came unfinished. Like, I still had to cut out the panels, like all that good stuff. And so I had my dome pretty well done about after three months. Um, and then the rest of it, because I didn't have like access to my own machine shop or anything, I had to wait for other builders to make the parts and get them shipped and all that kind of stuff. And that took about a year and a half. And then really, like as I would get parts, I would do the little pieces. So like if I had enough of a leg, I could start to figure out how to attach and paint the leg. Um, but it was really the last three months, once I finally got the frame, I could actually start attaching things together. That's when it really took off. And it really only took about three months from that point. I mean, that was like coming home from work every single day, working four to five hours on it, working 12 hour day weekends, 20, you know, 12 days wow. kind of thing. Um, and my job has off every other Friday, and so that was working full Fridays as well. Um, and that was also with inviting friends over to help do pieces as well. Um, so a lot of man hours <laughs> went into the end. Because um, the thing is, um, like a lot of my friends are like, oh, you know, I will gladly help whatever with R2. So I actually, on my back panel on the top, it says like, this story belongs to Carrie Bean with the help of, and I have everyone else <laughs> sign their name that is helping me with my droid as well. Um, that's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a cute way to like, get people, you know, <laughs> they did work, it. so. Oh, yeah. you know. Take the village. Yeah. <laughs> So for skill-wise, you said you're a NASA engineer, but you needed help with electronics. Is there a particular skill that applies for the whole base structure? Is there a place you should start in particular, or if something you should bring to the project in the first place as far as you go? Or? Yeah, so um, I've been trying to learn a bit more like um, with like starter kits. Um, uh, like Arduino starter kits and that sort of thing, just trying to kind of figure it out for my own. Um, now I'm still letting my NASA engineer friends do it all. Um, but I'm also like having them kind of talk me through it on the way so I, I at least kind of know what's going on with my own story. Um, yeah, so I mean electronics is usually a, a lot of what people struggle with because that's not intuitive to a lot of uh, everyday parts um, for most people. Um, the mechanical aspects, I didn't have too much of a trouble with. There wasn't anything like too crazy, but I wasn't doing any of the real machining of the parts. It was more just like drill the holes to attach them together, sand it down, and all that kind of stuff. I don't know what kind of experiences y'all have had. I brought absolutely no skills to the table. <laughs> I've never <laughs> built a thing in my life. I saw this R2D2 at a convention, and I really, really wanted one. So I basically went to the website, and I saw all these amazing things that everybody can do, and then there's also parts that you can purchase. And so just kind of like you, you learn along the way. Yeah. So you're going to struggle with it. You're going to ask for help, and that's okay. I'm an accountant by trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, learn as you go. And they have build days in Southern California. I mean, I learn with hands-on I mean, I can read a build blog and, you know, kind of turn pieces together, but actually going and having somebody, you know, show it to me and have hands-on, I mean, that's the best way I learn, so that's another great thing about the group. There's a lot of people that you can reach out to, to help build your skills. And it's the determination and the curiosity and never giving up. When it's, like, it's like we're starting with any hobby. It's like, I don't know how to knit. That's probably the one girl thing I don't know how to do. I'm really bad at sewing. But this was one thing that really interests me. So it's like, if, if it interests you, you just keep going forward. You're going to push through it. And eventually you'll get it, you know? So none of us, you know, started out as so experts. satisfying. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, so if you wanted to go the 3D printed route, learn your 3D printer. You know, print out some smaller parts. That's maybe not even droid related. You get those quick wins. And that's like the biggest thing with the club. You just get those quick wins and eventually over time you will finally have your droid. But just never give up and never lose curiosity. Was there ever made C3PO? Yes, uh, actually. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, my boyfriend is in C3PO downstairs. Um, but it's a costume. Most yeah. people wear it as a costume. It's not a, a animatronic one. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a difficult costume. Like I literally have to like screw him into the costume. There are like, it, yeah, it, it was insane. Um, but it's really fun because now I've got R2 and he's 3PO and so when we walk around people are like, oh, 
you know. A lot of people just don't have the right, like, physique. Yeah, the physical body type, and you've got to be a skinny rail, basically. Um, and then um, also, it's very confining. Like, the helmet is like this. It literally pushes in his nose. And, like, I attach it to him. Like, there is no, like, he cannot get out of his own costume. So um, you have to have, basically, like, someone you trust that can take care of you and make sure that you don't, like, fall and die in the costume um, because it, it's all just hard parts. Um, he, he pretty much has no motion in it, and it's, it's all attached. So um, I only know of, like, <laughs> my boyfriend and one other guy in the Los Angeles area that have 3PO costumes, or maybe like a few more, but those are the two I know of. I don't know if y'all happen to know. Chris. Yeah, Gordon. Gordon. Oh, Chris, yeah, okay. So yeah, three that I know of in LA. <laughs> There's like one in the Bay Area that I know of as well. Yeah, but we have at least three here in Southern California. Yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, we already have more than that just up here for our twos, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then another question. Uh, we'll go with uh, far back first and then uh, closer. Yeah. Your part wise, are they like raspberry pies inside? Yeah, so mine is a, a custom printed Arduino. Um, I went with a, a special control system. Um, so the guy made like a custom printed one. How about y'all? Yeah, you are Arduino. So Arduino Mega. I've not got that far. <laughs> uh, I don't know. My husband took the electronics in that one. So I don't it's RC control. Yeah, so it's like a, he's got like a, he's got a drone. Plane. Yeah, like, like, like a little plane. And that's the same for my, my mouse droid. It's just the RC car and you make your shell and you pop it on top. And there you go. Okay, and then the one closer. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I just joined your star. Start yeah, yeah. I looked to make sure I had the right one when I got that, so I was fitting it. But the other question I had was the paint. What is the best paint you probably could have got the money about that? That will hold it and won't be something that will peel off. Because I've had that for other models I've made on kits, you know, and the paint can be wrong and it starts peeling. Um, well, I prefer to. Some people go through the automotive paint, yeah. you know, if you want it to be really fancy. Um, and what was the other one? There was another one, like if you did do a spray paint, I forgot what the name of it is, but you yeah. can use spray paint. Yeah, like I, I did spray paint on mine. Um, I did two coats of like a, a sheer purple, just to give it kind of a purple undertone. And then I did three coats of a metallic blue on top. So it's got like metallic flakes in it to give it a nice sparkle in the sun. Um, and then I did two coats of clear, cop, clear uh, coat top. Um, and even then it still like gets occasionally dinged up and that sort of thing. But the thing with R2 is that he's pretty much never clear or, you know, perfect in the first place, so it's just weather. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> yeah, and with BB-8, it's uh, my spray paint, but you can use automotive paint, so my next one, I'll do the next one, um, where you do automotive paint just to get a little bit more vibrant color and then try to do the weathering a little differently. Um, so I have um, acrylic paints and did a wash on it uh, to weather it out. Um, but you have to be very careful because you can make it look super muddy or it looks like it went in poo or something like that. And you don't want it to look like that. And we've seen drawers and you're like, oh, that's bad. But day go about one. Try to be careful with that. Um, but yeah, so mine, mine's mine spray painted and then um, clear coated. I'm not got that part. Why is what you got in there? <laughs> yeah. Um, for the plastic, it's uh, we used acrylic, just spray paint on that one, and uh, there's a, it's a Montana, it's a lacquer base. So, I mean, if you really want it sturdy, I'd you know go get the auto shop to paint it for you. But I, I'm gonna re they get repainted different colors. I've repainted my mouse droid like four times, so I, I just like <laughs> messing with it. So it's up to you how sturdy yeah. you want it. And one of the things I eventually want to do, like distance goal for R2, is make him like interchangeable, so I can make him pink instead of blue. Um, that's a that's a long term goal. <laughs> I'd rather like get the head spinning, working first, and, and some other things. But um, once I'm to the stage of the more cosmetic one, I want to be able to interchange the colors. So then the question right for me? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a two parter, but I was wondering if there was any part of the project that was either particularly uh, difficult or particularly for you, like let's say you mess up this part and you ruin a thousand dollar part, or you ruin one. Those are expensive parts. Yeah. Um, you probably want to be careful with your batteries if you don't want them to catch fire. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's.
that's an important one. Um, I don't know. On mine, the only real expensive parts um, were the frame and then also the uh, drive system, which I had someone else do and install and everything. So I didn't have a chance to really like mess up any big part of mine, I suppose. But um, I mean, I guess I did just mess up my dome, which is a couple hundred dollars, <laughs> but you know, as, as everyone says, it's weathering. Um, <laughs> um, the thing is like a lot of it is recoverable because if you like scratch like the surface of the skins, you're gonna paint over it anyway. Um, you know, a lot of things you can paint or like backfill in um, and, and that sort of thing, um, or sand out a cut or something like that. So um, I don't know that there's any like really big parts that you can just completely you can fry out the system. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. That, so for BB-8, um, there's uh, three different. Um, how do we call it? I always have this word with me. Not the motors. The um, Controllers? No! <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking out. Um, you can yeah, you can burn out the motors. You do have motors, uh, servos. There you go. That's the word. I was like, that's servos. What's in my drawer? Um, so you can, so you can burn out the servos, and those are two hundred and fifty dollars a pop. Yeah. And so if you just drive on the wrong carpet, if it's too thick, um, I've seen that on R2. Um, people burning out their motors on driving too thick of carpet. Um, if you drive, I've seen R2 dip and fall, so either driving off stage by accident, going off a curb and face planning, you have a 323 R2s where um, the, the middle leg will drop down and then it's supposed to lean back. A lot of the times that, that's a much harder droid to have, it's very finicky, and I've seen those face plant, and so you do all that hard work and you just damage mm -hmm. your full cosmetic part of it. Um, from the A side, I've seen it take off. Um, the switch didn't work, ran in and made a big old hole in the wall, ran down somebody's stairs, so you just, all that work is gone. Um, if you're working on it on a table, it's rolled up, you forget that you're on a table and it's round. You know, so just a lot of it can be just human error doing something so stupid because you're so just engrossed in what you're doing that you forget the safety part of it. So a lot of it is just doing checks and balances, making sure you know what you're doing, um, do not cross the cables, don't cross the streams, you know, <laughs> you, can, you can end up just, you know, catching yourself on fire. So there's just, you know, some basic things that you want to make sure that you're doing. But yeah, I mean, like the harder part is just completely destroying the droid and, you know, running into something. So like the part you said about sometimes the carpet's too thick. Do you, can you just put him on neutral and start pushing him? Is that what you end up doing? Or? Uh, he'll just sit there. You know, <laughs> okay. if, it, if it's too hard, because what will end up happening is that um, even for like the big conventions like Dragon Con, I don't know if you've been to Dragon Con, um, their carpet's actually really nice, but it's really dirty. Mm -hmm. And so stuff will start being picked up on the wall and then it gets up into the dome and then it clogs the wheels and then all of a sudden my head's not moving properly so I have to change out the wheels. You know? oh. So there's like some more stuff you know, with mm -hmm. that. Yeah. My hair gets like wrapped up in the drive system of R2 as I'm driving around my apartment. So like every once in a while I just have to go in there and like clean out all my hair. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. Have you guys ever made like any of those like imperial like arguments like the black one with the like like blonde style? Yeah, there's a couple of other C2P5. Yeah. yeah. There is a, an actual uh, a lady builder that built a black one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That paint scheme on that one's based on that the copper one. We just made the copper piece blue. Mm -hmm. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean, y'all can pick kind of whatever colors. Um, I know someone locally who made theirs themed like Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. The Boba Fett color scheme, decals, nice. all that stuff. Um, and also some people have like done R2 inspired, so I've like seen steampunk ones where he's literally got like the choo-choo engine thing yeah. going on. Um, we've also got Art Deco that I've seen. Um, my ex-husband made one that was entirely out of connects. Um, and there's a Lego one. Foam oh, board one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really like. <laughs> Way in the back. So the dimensions of the R2s all look like they're more or less the same. Is there a, like a template that you work off of? And how much of that is like individual like DIY problem solving? Like 
how much of it can you rely on like the materials for manufacturing and how much can you sort of have to go off of and figure it out? Yeah, so there are actually blueprints in the club and um, there's, there's essentially two different types of blueprints and so people, if they're making parts, will label this is this version's blueprint of the leg or the dome or this particular piece, whatever it is. Um, and so that way you know what size you're getting. Um, so one, that's one of the decisions you usually have to make when you're building your R2 is pick like which pack you're going to go. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you really can't tell much of a difference if they're sitting next to each other even. It's like one is like three eighths of an inch wider and half an inch taller and like, mm. it's close. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure you know which part you're getting. And some are interchangeable between the two, but um, yeah, um, that at least is, that way they're standard. So like if somebody's making it in the club, they're moving it to that standard so you know that you're matching. Um, but if you're going like super custom, like the Art Deco ones and whatever, you're on your own, you know? <laughs> They measured, they went and measured the screen R2 and they, so they got the specs from it. Yeah. So, you know, celebration's coming back to Anaheim. Woo! Yep. Yeah. It's going. Yeah. Yeah, we're all Woo! going. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so you're planning on, and what I heard is that there's going to be like a whole art of building the yeah. Legos wing. Yep. Oh, yep. Wow. Yeah, there so, should be about a hundred of these there. Yeah, oh, and wow. Yeah. yeah. The last time I see wait. all those there. Yeah. Like, I can't oh, wait. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So that was really something. But I also heard something about they're talking about doing a little parade and everything outside the building. Is it weird? Uh, like, yeah, that's part of the scheduling part. If they, yeah. Because I think we're, I mean, there'll be a display and then there'll be some roaming around, so I don't know if they. I probably have to make something schedule. We've got like a whole other row of joint builders like right here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not in with the yeah. scheduling. Yeah. I don't yeah. 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 I'm sure there'll be some sort of like yeah. R2 yeah. builders panel as well. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the times that stuff isn't going to be scheduled like officially to the club. It's just yeah. like a bunch of people that are like, hey, let's go grab our joints and let's go. And yeah. you'll just see a line of them. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I kind of heard that it from somebody I know. It'd be nice if they had a time so everybody could. Yeah, yeah. Watch. Yeah. 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 But I'm looking forward to it because, yeah, that is the most incredible oh, yeah. joy I've ever seen, ever. Mm -hmm. And I did go all of them up to that oh, gate, and yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. And it's amazing how many people are doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. people are going to bring in their joys from all over the country. Yeah. 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 Some will ship them from the world, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone loves to come to these things, so. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting. You'll see every color under the sun. You'll see all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, uh, if there's one thing you really want to add to your joy and you haven't done so, what will that thing be? Oh, if you could add anything. Yeah. Um, add a bubble maker to my mouse joy. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> Come out with back trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to add a thumbs up. But yeah. there's only, mm -hmm. mechanically it's not possible. Because there's no room in it. It's either you drive it or it's just going to sit there static and do the thumbs up. It can't do both. Oh. So, that, yeah, that's what I would like to do. Yeah, so I'm, I'm working towards having like all the panels and arms and everything open right now. Um, to me, that's like gives R2 the most yeah. personality. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's the goal, um, is to have them a lot more animated. Mm -hmm. Mine's fictional, but <laughs> a vacuum. <laughs> oh. Yes. No, I had a lot of people like the, 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 like two questions I usually get asked is like one, how much did it cost, and two, when are you putting in the taser? Um, I don't want to put in the taser because I would like to be able to continue to take it to my NASA facility, and they do not allow weapons, so I would like to you know continue bringing them. Um, but I. Um, uh, I've often, you know, thought about putting like a coffee maker in there, like an old yeah. espresso machine, and then like in the morning it just rolls up and, and gives you that. Of course, the vacuum is a good idea. <laughs> um, beer fridge, you know, it's all fine. You <laughs> can put it all in there. There's room. Yeah, there's room that you have. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? We're almost out of time anyway. That's yes. Quick question. You've gone over several. Uh, Deep cool areas. What's your reference guide? What's your index? Where are you getting this from? So as far as somebody doesn't buy the wrong 3D printer, 
you guys are got somewhere in the forum, I'm guessing, that you have, hey, buy this prayer because if you do this, you're just going to pay twice or something. Is it something like that out there? Yeah, there's a whole 3D printing subsection, and they go through printer recommendations, and I've had luck with this one, didn't have luck with this one, all that good stuff. Along with all the other tools as well. find you on Facebook. <laughs>